All right, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Aaron Pratt. Uh, I guide here on West Branch with my guide service, Turning Waters Guide Service, and I have a bait company as well where I make uh, bucktail spinner baits and buzz baits, all blade baits for muskies. I'm going to do a giveaway here in a second. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So last year, Derek had reached out to me and found me, and uh, a handful of you guys have had purchased some bucktails off me. Yep. And for you guys in the kayaks, uh, and, and Derek had messaged me and said, "Hey, you know, we're a bunch of us. We're all going musky fishing." And then the bucktail had sold him, and maybe a couple other guys too. They said the blades weren't spinning. And for you guys being so low in the water. You don't, you're, you're using, some of you may have musky stuff, maybe some of you may have bass stuff. The higher gear ratios in musky stuff is going to be more favorable for you, but with some of the bass stuff, you don't have the angle because you're not as high. You're sitting lower the water and your angle, so your, your broadcasting tip, you're pulling that bait this way. Your figure eights and your retrieval is, is just going to be harder for you in general. So, and I've been thinking about this, and, and yeah, and the figure eights too. Uh, Small crankbaits, like it doesn't matter if you're in a boat or kayak. This is what I've been running today. You don't have to run big giant musky stuff. This is this is actually built for musky fishing. Uh, the gentleman in Columbus makes them. It's called Extreme Bait Company. Uh, and then Lunge and Lures 22 shorts. Crankbaits, uh, spinner baits, top water stuff, but crankbaits in general are going to be great for you guys uh, because there's not as much. There's not, not as much work needed whenever you're retrieving them. Well, I found, too, when I was casting that bucktail, I threw that thing out. It almost wasn't that I was bringing it back to me. I was almost going to it. So yeah, and there's a fair amount of pull because of double blades on there. I found that once I got on shore and I cast it, it worked fine. I just think that, uh, you know, if you Because you're standing up and, and you've got that going, downward angle. Yeah. And then get it going, it, it worked. But yeah. I was just trying to cast it out and just reel it in, and it wasn't, uh, wasn't, wasn't working out. But I did figure out the technique. Yeah. yeah. And I see a lot of you guys posting stuff where you guys are buying some of the bass swim baits and the bigger stuff. Uh, I personally don't, I don't use any of that stuff on my boat. Not saying that doesn't work. There's just other simpler things that I'm going to use versus a bait like that, a segmented uh, 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 swim bait or anything, articulated, whatever. A crankbait. I use crankbaits. I'm very, very simple and easy with this stuff. It's not rocket science, but little crankbaits like that, we catch tons of fish. Uh, and also, like, back to you guys being slow in the water with the kayaks and the bucktails. When I take customers in this boat, even though they're up, a person that doesn't musky fish all the time and, and that's not used to being as aggressive with the style of fishing that we're doing with the bucktails. Speed, keeping the blades turning on the figure eights next to the boat to keep the fish interested. It's the worst thing in the world to do. Because some people, I said, they're not aggressive enough and they don't understand that if those blades stop turning here and there's a fish behind it, that fish will turn off and it's no longer interested. Uh, I, I made a, a spinner bait just like this, but it was a lot bigger profile. I sold them, guys bought them, they've got a bunch of fish on them. I didn't like my own spinner baits. So I, I made a smaller profile, smaller blades, with still the large skirt on there, and I started using them. We caught a lot of fish on them last year. And just downsizing, it seemed like I caught a lot more fish in various sizes. And for my customers as well, and even you guys in your kayaks, Super, it's just like a, an oversized bass spinner bait. The blade's always going to spin no matter fa how fast or slow that you guys do your retrieval if you are low in the water like you are. And you're going to have better results with it on the figure eight uh, in the kayaks. This is a, an ounce and a half, and it does tend, it's a little bit heavier. I'll, I'll run them off weed edges, eight and ten foot of water. And then I got a one ounce single blade right here. That's meant for right now. It's got actually more vibration, more thump than the ounce and a half, or and it'll sit higher in the water column. And when, like right now, we actually just had a fish on this bait on that bank on the north bank up there. And that fish one crank, and he had it on his on the spinner bait. I mean, it was sitting a foot off the shoreline. I botched it. <laughs> Not his fault. What action rod do you use? I use heavy action, a lot of stuff. Uh, a longer rod for you guys will work as well. You guys are probably having a lot of stuff six, six, seven foot, right? So, where is that rod at? One of my favorite rods to throw this light stuff on here, 
and I don't know if it'll work for you guys or not. Eight and a half foot. And that's an actually pretty a pretty limber rod. It's a musky rod, but there's a lot of tip, a lot of tip to it. Nice thing about this, it's telescopic. So if you guys have it in the kayak and you want to store it, it goes down to about seven foot. Now whenever I want to use it, I just pull it back out. And that way I've got a lot of leverage getting down in the water. I don't have to bend and move as much. Uh, so sometimes even, yeah, you're going to have a lot more reach. Uh, getting a little bit, eight, eight and a half foot would probably help you. And like I said, with you, you, you guys in the kayaks, you set the hook on a big giant fish, it might pull the kayak to the fish when you're setting the hook. So maybe even a little bit stiffer rod. Uh, like here's, that's an eight foot heavy action. And I don't necessarily throw it or use these heavier action rods to throw bigger baits. It's to bury hooks in their, in their bony mouth harder and better. Uh, and you guys do tend to tend to favor this west end a lot. Maybe These, because it's no wake. Yeah, it's no wake. It's easier for you guys. It's safer. I typically, till about the second week in June, I don't leave this end of the lake a whole lot. There's plenty of fish over here. The staging grounds for when they spawn, they'll spawn through the entire lake. Shallow bays, like you guys mentioned, Silver Creek. There, there, there was a bunch of fish in Silver Creek. They're probably still there. These water temps warm up. They're going to start moving out and go on Main Lake. But there's always resident fish that stay back there, and there's always resident fish that stay here too. So, with you guys, as far as spots on this lake, I've caught numerous muskies off that gravel boat ramp right there, short line trolling. Uh, right here where that boat is over there, that's a good spot. That's where we had all our action at this morning. But that behind the island on this northwest shoreline over here. What they call Catfish Bay? I've never heard that. I'm not sure what they call it. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's always that guy. Uh, so are you finding they're shallow right now? Yep. Yeah, because they just come off spawn. This time of the year, our favorite thing to do is short line troll. I'm literally running. Actually, this is too long right here. I'm running that much line off my rod tip and putting that thing in a rod holder and going four miles an hour. Right there next to the boat? Right next to the boat. Several of the fish this morning ate in the prop wash. Yeah, so I... And I did you say you are going four miles an hour? Four miles an hour. That's a, little, that's a little fast for us. John, you could probably hit that. <laughs> but I mean, I had, I had this motor running this morning with a bigger, with a bigger bait on and they were eating eight foot off the prop uh, they don't they don't care they don't mind they're 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 aggressive and this time of the year they're just coming off a of spawn and they're feisty they're really feisty and they'll eat a bait we actually i hooked one the other day out here we were i had four foot of line out and i lifted the rod up to where i could see the bait and a musky ate it back in silver creek a little one so you can't get too aggressive and you can't get too close to the boat this time of the year Huge, huge, to a point. Uh, and and I, I always set, like whenever we're short line trolling this, this time of the year, I set my coloring patterns for the entire year or at least half the summer right now. So whatever colors I get them to eat now, they'll continue that pattern through the bulk of the summer until they really move out and go east and go in the deeper water. So right now, it's been green, chartreuses. Uh, last year it was orange, year before it was orange. And there's some years where it's orange and yellow or like an orange and gold. For whatever reason, it's chartreuse this year. Uh, I put chartreuse belly on, dark back, and they fired immediately. I mean, I had it in the water five minutes and a fish, fish was on. Uh, these fish in this lake, if you're throwing a bait for an hour, two hours, and the fish are active and they're feeding and eating, and you don't catch a fish, they don't want that bait. When you find the right color or right bait, literally, if you're in a spot that has fish in it, Within five to ten minutes, they'll let you know immediately what they want and what color, what size, what style, what style of bait. Uh, for you guys, top water should be fairly easy as well. The traditional musky top water baits. The traditional top water musky baits and bass baits, the whopper ploppers, the 90s, 130s, those will all work at some point in time. We've thrown those baits a ton. 
And I've always thrown buzz baits, whether it be a half ounce bass buzz bait. And for many years, guys have said, why don't you make your own buzz bait? Last fall, I threw together a, a bunch of different styles of blades and sizes. And I come up with this one. And in three weeks, in September to the first week of October, we, we caught 16 on. And I've never had muskies respond to top water in Ohio like that. Uh, it's still the bass, the bass buzz bait profile, but it's built more for muskies. And right now, these fish should start eating this bait shortly. You get one right now, I'm going to shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you still eat on everything? Yeah. Uh, I haven't caught any bass on them yet. The bass buzz baits, actually, I've got some bigger one ounce. Uh, it's a Spro makes a top water fill. It's a 90 size. It's one ounce. I've caught some big bass in the West End over here in the fall, and we've hooked quite a few muskies on it. Uh, the biggest thing with this, a standard single blade buzz bait will work well. Some that have the clickers on them work well. Black or white. That's it. That's that's the best best colors by far. It's either one or the other. If you throw black and they don't want it, put white on, you'll most likely catch a fish. Uh, and there's times where they don't want, and I've got, there's one the next size up from this. They don't always want something this loud and aggressive. And there's days where I gotta put my 3 8 ounce or half ounce bass buzz baits on, and they will eat that if they won't eat the musky size one. Uh, what's that? Straight? Nah, yeah. let them tell you what they want. Sometimes I, it's just barely gurgling right above the top, and some days I'm burnt to where it's spraying water out. So just try some different techniques till you see them following? Yep, and like I said, these muskies on this lake, even this, and don't let this muddy water bother you. They adapt to it every year. These muskies are, they see muddy water every 12 months out of the year. There's muddy water in this lake somewhere, and there's always muskies in it. Uh, and that's a big deterrent, but like I said, this lake here, Muskies are, 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 are sight fish. They, they like seeing what they're eating, and obviously it's a visual. The buzz baits, I do prefer clear water, top water baits. Clear water, clear water, clear water. And I, don't, I won't throw any chartreuse, no oranges, black or white. The spinner baits, you'll get more of a variance. Like right now, we found the pattern with the chartreuse for the crankbaits. Black and chartreuse and, and some white mixed in there for the spinner baits. We made 10 casts with it and, and hooked the fish on it. Uh, but like I said, these, that's what I run. I'll run this until mid June. That's that extreme. It's called an extreme mini. There's something about, and this is no different than a, a KVD 2.5 or 1.5. It's square bill. There's a little bit of a rattle in there. Actually, this one doesn't even have a rattle in it. Uh, your bass ones are going to have a lighter hook. So if you start hooking a bunch of muskies, you might want to put like a size one or two VMC, beef the split rings up. Uh, but for you that are, you guys that are running braid and leaders, don't run a giant 12 inch fluorocarbon leader. It'll kill the action of the bait. Uh, even these 22 shorts, you can catch fish on with a heavier leader, but anytime I run a small bait, I'm matching it above it too, to the rod. Light line, light leader. So, this is actually, I'm running a little bit bigger bait right here, but this is a 65 pound leader, it's nine inches long. That's the heaviest I'll throw, or even throw or use or troll with these small baits. Um, there's actually, VMC makes one, it's a titanium leader. Uh, they're six inches long and 50 pounds. That's perfect. It, it will not impede the action or, uh, Anything in the bait and 40 50 pound braid is is perfect. Uh, and then back to spots as far as right now, there, there's fish everywhere. These fish just came off a of spawn. There's probably still a few spawning. The bulk of them are post spawn. Your bigger females are going to go out in main lake channels, they're going to move around a little bit and they're going to go out in, in deep water and hang there and feed for a few weeks. So whether it's you guys or bass guys, you start talking to guys at the ramp and they caught a 45 incher flipping a shoreline, those big females are going to move up. So when you say they're out deep feeding, are they feeding down low on the bottom or are they looking up? Well, they're, they're all, they always look up, you know, the predatory fish eyes on top of their head, they always feed up. Uh, Marina Bay, even back in Silver Creek in the mouth in that deeper water, you drive out there and look at your graph, 
there's giant hooks sitting anywhere from 15 to 20 foot deep. That's those big female muskies, for the most part should be. And when you get, like we were up here Wednesday, we've had northeast winds for days. Rain coming through, uh, the warm weather came in and the, the, air, the wind direction changed southwest, northeast to southwest. The second that wind switched, those fish fired up, went nuts. Back in, back in Silver Creek, they went nuts back there. In through uh, some other spots in the lake, uh, wind direction changed. Northeast will shut them down. Uh, kind of like yeah, morning. wind blows from the east, fish bite the least. Right. Yep, and, and, and that's not... Anything, I think. It, it, and that's not true all the time. I've caught numerous fish up here on an east wind in the fall. But that's when you got water temps that are going from hot to cool. You can still catch them. In the springtime when you got water temps going from cool to warm, it seems to affect them a little bit more. Uh, so like even today you got a north wind. It's not really good, but it works. The fish are still feeding because now you've got the big females. And, and like I said, they'll move up. You can catch them once in a while. But for the bulk of it, you got them little 24 to 38 inch males that are everywhere right now and that's the bulk of what we're catching right now there have been like i said a few bigger fish caught that's when everything's been perfect weather you know the weather uh the barometer the wind direction all that moon phases like right now you're on your uh, new moon phase the the new moon phase and full moon phases are, are huge and there's a couple different websites and apps that i follow and you watch the majors and minors and you won't catch a fish and if you're in an area where there are fish and they're wanting to eat they will fire on the button during those majors and minors. Really? Yes. I was always wondering how accurate that was. And the majors and minors, the, the, you, you'll, most of the time you'll have two majors through the day and two minors. So that's when moon is overhead and underfoot. And the rest of it is moonrise and moonset. And your best major of the day is, is moon uh, underfoot, which means it's on the other side of the earth, opposite of us. And... I've done really really well in the fall specifically in the summertime you're going to a spot and you won't find a fish check your majors and as soon as that fires up you go back in there and catch fish uh, today it's from 12 30 to 3 30 for those of there, you that are interested <laughs> now what what are you looking at for the majors and minors uh, it's just a fishing app I don't know you have to be careful with those because like if you read a fishing magazine or if you get a fishing catalog it's got majors and minors they're going to set those times for whatever time zone they're in. And there's a positive influence on... This is for here. For, so are you putting in the zip code I'm for this? Zoomed in right on this lake. Okay, so I use one's called solunarforecast.com. And it has a default to Beverly Hills, California. So I have to, you have to go in there and change it every time. Right. And for what Ravenna here, it's 44266. And you watch, I mean, obviously, the moon and sun rise and set at different times according to where you're at on the earth and and for me that's been that's been spot on that's been spot on over the years uh right now is your guys' best time to catch fish on this side of the this side of the lake uh I said right in this area over here we catch a lot of them and then back up behind that island up there there's that big bay that's way up in the shallows up there and then to the left of that there's a shoreline we catch a ton of, and there's big fish over there. Those fish spawn there. Once they're done spawning and they go post-spawn, they don't go too far to recoup and then go back up and feed because they don't want to have to travel that far. And you get this river channel. The warmer the water gets in the in the summertime, they follow the river channel and they go east. Uh, during the month of June, I don't leave sight of that boat ramp right there. There's You can go back and fish them spots four, five, six times a day and catch and see different fish every time you there's go in there. Ramp around the corner? Yeah, yep, the, the, the Rock Springs ramp. Uh, I don't leave sight of that most of June. And you get till the end of June into July, uh, you guys would be a lot better off to launch down to the boat ramp at the dam down there and go back in Marina Bay. I mean, Marina Bay is good right now too, but there's there's a lot of water that you guys can still fish over there that's protected where you guys would be safe and not deal with uh, the boat traffic. Right. Uh, but, but this side of the lake over here is excellent. And getting the right color and like I said, I told you, small, small square bull crankbaits. You guys will catch more muskies than we ever will. Because you guys can get some kayaks in there and, and get in tighter spots. But some of these fish, I mean, they are six inches off that bank right there. You don't have to, yeah. Yeah, I was about to ask you, you say six 
shallow. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I don't think we went shallow enough today, and I've been running up to four foot deep. But I mean, literally, I mean, if you guys can get your kayaks, put a couple, put a rod out and hold it, and kayak, or somebody got the motors on there, or the foot pedals, put, put a bait up this far, ten foot back, and just go two miles an hour along them shorelines down through there, you'll hook them. You'll about rip the rod out of your hand probably, but you'll hook them. Musk, they're not intimidated by a boat, a prop, no. anything whatsoever. I said they're and coming up and eating that one bait there. They got they got they got prop turbulence right in their face. They don't care. They don't care one bit. That's why a lot of them you catch are all beat up. What do you do when you got one? How do you kill them? I mean, is there any any Where's my I do not, these grippers are beautiful. Yeah. Obviously I got the net, you guys don't really have that capability to carry a 20 pound net in your boat, but these things are worth their weight in gold. I, I do not lift them up and hang them this way. You can, uh, the bigger the fish, you can damage them, especially when the water gets warmer out. Uh, but if, once I give them the net, I'll get, the, I'll get the, the grippers on them, keep them in the water, and I just hold them up right here, pop the bait out, drop them back in. If I have a customer in the boat on a guy trip or like we had one earlier, I held it up, I got it a little bit vertical or horizontal and he got a glove on and put his hand up in there and then I dropped him off and he grabbed it and then got support on the belly. I'm thinking we could just fish grip it and almost slide it right into your kayak. Be very, very sure. careful. Like I said, them, and, and something else you want to watch too, if you guys do get a small one, 24, 30 inch, you're lifting the boat and you're holding it like this in front of you, if that tail curls up, it's ready to do this, and you better put it back in the water. Like this. <laughs> but I've had them do far worse. And if you do get your hand up into that gill plate, they will slice you bad with that gill plate. I mean, they, no, no bare hands. No, they get gill rakers in there. They'll, they'll, it's and they can, sharper than a razor blade in there. Right. It's not bulletproof but it'll help now, last year i had a customer never caught a muskie did the same thing it was about a 38 incher i had the grippers he reached down he got his hand in the gill plate and i was getting ready to tell him do not put your thumb in the corner of its mouth because when you get your hand in the gill plate Whoa. you tend to roll yeah. around like this oh, yeah. and you want to put pressure on the bottom of the jaw right here well he stuck his thumb right in the corner thing went and he got five stitches in his finger <laughs> i mean it like that uh even unhooking them Boat side, you just got the line. You're wanting to pop the pop the, the hooks out. They can do this one time, and it just goes like that, and you're, you're filleted down the front of your hands. Uh, right. And on top of that, don't go to get your fish or your hand into that fish's gill plate or anywhere near the jaw until that bait is gone. Yeah. Because the last thing in the world you want is one treble in that fish and one treble in your hands, because yeah. it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, yeah the, that would be a bad day. The, the the back if, if they got the back hook in their mouth and this front this front hook swinging well guess what that's that can still catch you the front hook in on a big bait is worse because now I've tried to do it just reach out and grab them and pop them off now that back hook swinging so I mean uh, they do what they want when they want just grip it use some pliers get the hook out yeah and uh, I have it myself but a small bear of, of bolt cutters or hook cutters. Even if you guys are using a small musky bait or a, a larger bass bait, they're got pretty thin hooks on them, and you don't have to get the the, the bolt cutters, but hook cutters. Uh, the the heavier bolt cutters are around 100 bucks. I, I'd rather cut a hook than have right. to go to the hospital right. and, and pay right. emergency right. emergency room bill. But these are the these are the pliers I use. The longer the better. The further away you are from everything, the better off you are. Uh, Here's another great bait for you guys. That's a mini Medusa. You can't do it wrong. You cannot do it wrong. You can cast it out, straight retrieve, or you can still work it and pump it. And there's no wrong way. And on the figure eights, you don't have a, a there's no way to, to, to screw that up on the figure eight by not having to keep something moving or flowing on it. Because it's got the actual it's, Yeah, tails. it's just rubber. It'll Over sink, there. it'll float, it'll do whatever you want with it, you know? So. This is another great bait for you guys. Uh, yeah, as as the water warms up and, the, and, and their metabolism speeds up a little bit, uh, they will tend to eat the bigger stuff. The uh, keeping it towards the top or let it down. 
what you let the fish tell you. This time of the year, if you're casting in shallow water, keep that thing a little behind the water column and no arc up on that like they would a glide bait. You know? Uh, glide bait for you guys probably be a little bit tougher. Where I see a glide bait. He's got a shum shum. He's got a shum right there. That's gotta be a relatively this tough one's visible. That's got tough bait for you to use though, ain't it? It is on this, yeah. Yes, because you need to be up and you need to get that there's a cadence you gotta get. And if you can't get that cadence, uh, if you can't get the cadence, that they're tough. And I'm not saying you, I'm not saying you can't get a, a decent case to catch a fish on it. But uh, four inch phantoms, four and a half inch phantoms, and six inch phantoms, you can do less of a tap and get more of a swing on them. Okay. So honestly, the smaller glide baits for you guys would work a lot better. Uh, still, a crank baits. Crank baits are great for you guys. Those little crank baits like that. That's good right there. That's, that's what we found last year at Leesville, Aaron. We went out and uh, we all bought these giant musky lures. And then the, the guys that knew that in the boats that knew what they were doing at Leesville, they're all casting uh, shad wraps and X wraps. Yep. Like, shit, we got these giant lures and they're consistently bringing musky in on yeah. four inch crate baits. Yep. Uh, the forage fish in Leesville are a lot smaller than what you got up here. You got a lot bigger water, you got deeper water, and, and, the, and the forage fish tend to run bigger in this lake. Uh, there's, I mean, we catch them on 14-inch baits in here late summer through the fall and into winter pretty consistently. Uh, this time of the year, springtime, always downsize. The bass guys catch way more muskies than we ever will, musky fishing. But, like I said, run these small spinner baits. It's, a, it's an oversized bass spinner bait and them little cranks. They work fantastic. The biggest part, like, for trolling, if any of you guys can get up that three to four miles an hour, the bass crankbaits may not run as well for you because they're not meant to run at high speeds. Whereas something like that, that is built for musky fishing, they'll run truer at higher speeds. That's why we run these and not a bass crankbait, you know? Uh, muskies love flicker shads up here. They love flicker shads. Uh, they... There you go, buddy. Back to the hat. <laughs> yeah, there's, there, there's, a, there's a red crawdad one. It's got a brown back and a red crawdad. That's probably about the best color up here. But shad colors, shad colors as a whole, shad colors in every bait. And I got, I run tons of shad stuff. Uh, here's a, this is actually a jerk bait I just repainted, but that's the colors I use up here in a lot of my rubber and jerk baits and crank baits all the time. You got muddy water now, so they're on the chartreuse, they want some color. How about that? Color. That should work. Is that a lucky craft? Yep. Yeah, that should work. Yeah, I would. Like I said, in the muddy water over here in this dingy water, they'll eat that stuff, but they're probably more apt to eat something uh, chartreuse or orange or a bright green. The only thing going for that, I got that, that, that white belly. And anytime you get a, a light belly and a, deep, a darker contrast on the back, there's contrast in the bait as a whole. Contrast in, in baits for musky fishing helps out a ton as well. That's why we always use, we use tons of bright stuff. Uh, that little, this little Medusa right here. Orange, white, and black. You, you, those are the top three musky colors in any bait ever made. And my musky will eat that at any given point in time as long as they're on them colors. Uh, you guys have any more questions for me? Uh, casting or trolling? Casting. Uh, this one here, if you run a light leader and a 40 or 50 pound braid on a long cast and a good steady retrieve, eight to ten foot uh, and when I do cast these when I'm done trolling them in the spring I'll cast them through summer and then back again in the fall and I mean I burn these things in as fast as I can reel my reel I'm cranking these things in a lot of times speed is key because you're, you're they're not essentially hungry it's a reaction strike that's why we catch so many fish trolling at the higher speed it's a reaction they're not eating because they're hungry uh, yeah <laughs> it's going by and fast it ticks them off and they want to eat it uh, these little guys right here, like I said, about the same depth as a, a, a bass crankbait and a square bill. This will, because it is denser, it's wood, not a hollow plastic. It will run deeper. On 40 pound braid, I think 48 feet of line back, I can tick 10 foot deep. Uh, like I said, right now though, I'm running these things eight, 10 foot back tops, max. And it's running two or three foot deep and I'm running over all those weeds that are popping up in the shallows on them flats right there. Uh, and also something else too the, the reason we favor that north side it's the northern exposure the sun's always in the southern part of the sky so as it goes from from 
east to west, it's in the southern sky, and that main bulk of that sun is is emanating on a north shoreline. Those always warm the fastest. Yep. And rocks too this time of the year. Uh, I was just telling him I, I noticed that a lot of the fish that we're hooking uh, today trolling, they were adjacent to a sand or a rock bottom, and there's not a whole lot of that on this end of the lake. Uh, these shorelines right in through here, over there, and then there's another batch where he hooked that muskie and the spinnerbait on the north shoreline behind the island. There's rock and gravel in there. So when you guys are in your kayaks, pay attention to the bottom shorelines. If there's rock and, and gravel up top, it's going to come out a little bit, but as soon as you hit your weed edges, that's going to be mostly a mud bottom. And sometimes if you key on and pay attention to stupid stuff like that, it, it, it'll make a difference. But for the bulk of it, we've been hooking fish all around a gravel or sand bottom right now. Uh, any other questions? No, thank you very yeah, much. Awesome, yeah, awesome info, man. No problem, guys. Awesome info. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, and I. So I, I so I, so good job. Really good thank you. I appreciate it, guys, very yeah, much. Awesome info. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I've got cards here. Uh, so. Well, I'll, I'll post this link again tonight. Yeah, you guys can talk, contact me. No, I'm not that brave. You guys are way braver than I'll ever be. <laughs> I have trouble in this thing. Our, it, it's a hard enough time. Eventually, I will. I'm actually considering. Uh, I, I may end up buying a smaller boat and doing some of the river stuff, the Mahoney River, for pike and muskie in the colder weather months when the lakes suck. Because once the spawn hits here, the bite just shuts down. I mean, you can catch fish, but I'd rather go watch paint dry, to be honest with you, than come out here and drive around for 12 hours a day and hope for one fish. Right. Uh, so when, when does it? When do you think it slows down? Hot summer months like July, August. That's my best months. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Because the fish are more predictable, and here's why: early in the morning, if you guys get sun, say you come out 90 degrees out, bright and sunny, you guys got to get out on that main lake in that deep water. Having graphs and and that's the biggest part. There's certain contour lines and break line stuff we cover. The brighter and sunnier it gets, the more fish we catch because they move out in the open water. And they'll sit at a certain depth above a certain contour line, and they'll stack up on there. Four, five, six, Once ten. Once you start seeing them on the graph, you know, yeah. you know where to target yep. them. Yep, and we do target a lot of the deeper water. We drag bottling baits, too. That doesn't always work, uh, but there's certain times of the year, by far, it does work. Is that a crime, boss? That's, that's right there. Perfect. That's your color. That's yeah. perfect. Can I have it? Yeah, that, that's perfect. <laughs> that is the, I, you know what? I've got a couple on the boat. I can't get them to go. Uh, if you put ample time on that, if you can't, I, I'd be real surprised if you don't catch a couple fish on that. Uh, so I'm not, how many of you, how many of you are, are you here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Stand up on your kayak, it's chicken time. Hey, let's race. I'm a heady. I ain't racing John. They win, they got two on theirs. Okay, we're going to start here and work this way. Everybody pick a number from 1 to 100. i got two numbers in my head. Whoever gets the closest, within 5, I'll hand them a bait. All right, I'll go 50. 17. 78. Red shirt? What? Okay, there's a turkey right there behind us. Yeah. There's a turkey right there, there's a hen. <laughs> okay. Thirteen? Go ahead, buddy. Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. Numbers are sixty and seventy-five. I said seventy-eight. And I had fifty. 
Sixty and seventy-five. For him for sure. Yeah. You were at fifty? Fifty, yeah. Seventy-eight. Which were you? He was four. You were too far. Yeah. Everybody's so close. All right, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll tell you what. There, you take them, you hand them out. They're too, oh, they're too, too close. They're going and you can't keep them. I can't keep them. So here. Here's what we'll do, guys. I'll uh, we'll stage a little drawing. Here, he gets a prize for the drawing. Woo! That there's a there's a one ounce right there, and then there's two ounce and a half I got cards in there. I appreciate that, Aaron. Thank no you very problem. much. Oh, I'm on it. <laughs> All right, what were your numbers that you said? 60 and... 60 and 75. All right. We'll, we'll hash this out, brother. Uh, you guys can contact me for baits, guide trip, anything you want. Also, Mark's Bait and Tackle. Yeah, I don't know if any of you have been in there. He's got a huge selection of musky stuff up there. Huge selection. And there's a bunch of my baits up there. Oh, really? Yeah, I got... He sells 500 baits a year, something like that. It's crazy the amount of baits he sells up there. But, I mean, if you guys want musky stuff locally here in this area, that's the place to stop at. Uh, if any of you are from the Canton area, I work at Ohio Outdoor Sports in Canton, and we've got a ton of musky stuff in there. Rods, reels, all kinds of stuff. Uh, release tools. Uh, and also, too, it's, it's, I didn't cover it enough. Uh, releasing these fish as best we possibly can. I know we do all we can is is more important than anything only because there's no seasons in ohio that's because they're stocked fish they'll spawn they'll go through the actions they won't actually spawn though so with them being stocked the state has to get so much x amount of dollars every year to raise these fish at the hatcheries feed them and then take them and dump them in the lakes and stuff so us you know cpr catch photo release is more important than anything and if you musky fish long enough it's not a matter of if it's when you're, I mean, we you're going to kill a muskie or two. It happens, uh, but having good release tools and and not uh, uh, over fighting the fish for too long and trying to wear them out uh, definitely helps too. Especially and it's it's top. a little bit harder for you guys in the kayaks, but like us in the boat, having the heavier gear is going to help with that too. You can horse them in, get them in, get the bait out, grab a couple of pictures if you want to, and put them back in the water. Yeah, we have found that we go for a sleigh ride sometimes. Yeah. Okay, yep. We'll go, we'll go to the yeah. Uh, and releasing these fish a lot of people tend to swish them back and forth you can actually do more more harm than good if that water goes in the back of their gills and goes up then they can suck that back down that can do more harm you just hold them and i've had a couple bigger fish we've had poor releases on they just didn't want to go and if you hold that tail long enough it'll rub that slime off keeping all that slime on them as, as best you can is, is super important as well and when i when i grab them i just lightly got my hand around that tail and just kind of hold them upright if that fish is sitting upright, though, as long as they're not going belly up, if they swim off, stay on top, let them go for a while. They usually recoup and they'll go back down themselves. Uh, if they're belly up, sit with them a little bit. If anything, if you guys have those grippers in your kayaks, put it on the bottom jaw and hold beside the boat and just go in a forward motion for a little bit and, and get some water flowing through their gills to get more oxygen in their body. No back and forth. Yeah, yep. But, yeah, if you have one going belly up, just get the grippers on there and go forward with them. And once they start kicking and thrashing, they're usually okay, and you can pop them off, and, and they'll go down a little bit. But uh, as long as they're not belly up, if they're upright and they're they're.